Good morning, or maybe it's the afternoon, not sure. Um, so today we're doing something slightly different. Yesterday we looked at the story of Little Red Riding Hood and you either did some acting or you made a story map or maybe you did both. So today I've got my story map here ready to go because we're going to need that to help us. Today we're going to be looking at the plot of the story. The plot of the story is all of the main events and things that happen in the story. And we're going to look at something called a story mountain. A story mountain is a little bit like a story map, but it helps us to work out when the different events happen in the story. Now I'm going to show you down here what it looks like. So I'm using my story map to remind me of the different things that happened at the beginning of the story. I've got Little Red Riding Hood and then she's got the basket and her mum's saying, remember, don't talk to strangers. So that's happening at the opening, the very beginning of the story. See if you can have a go at drawing your own story mountain now that I've shown you an example. If you're feeling confident, then pause the video here and have a go at drawing it. And if you're not feeling too confident yet, then keep watching and I will show you what my story mountain looks like when it's finished. So here is my finished story mountain. I've got the opening, which has Little Red Riding Hood with her basket going into the woods. The number two is the build-up. That is where I have said Little Red Riding Hood meets the wolf in the woods and then the arrow shows that the wolf goes off towards Grandma's house. Number three is the problem and I have drawn a picture of the wolf lying in bed having just eaten the Grandma. Number four is the resolution. The woodcutter hears the screams and comes running to save the day. And the final thing is the ending. Number five is when Little Red Riding Hood says, I'll never speak to strangers. Now that I've done my story mountain and I have plotted the main events of the story, I'm going to use this space inside my story mountain to come up with some interesting adjectives or phrases that I think would link to the characters. Here it is, and this is what yours should look like when you're finished. You might even be able to fill your whole mountain with different adjectives. And now it's your turn. I used my story map from yesterday to help me create a story mountain, which shows the main events of the story and the build up and the problem is at the top of the mountain. I bet that you can fill your whole mountain with useful adjectives to describe what's happening in the story. Good luck, everyone.